All scripture is given by the inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Welcome to Thinking Biblically. This is the 14th day of June in the year of our Lord, 2022. Well, let's go over to the scriptures. 2 Thessalonians again. Chapter 2 again. Starting at verse 8. And then the lawless one will be revealed, whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. I want to point out something. A problem with Bible translations. Um, you have to translate one language into another. There's not a exact word-for-word -word correspondence often. And languages have different forms and different ways of expressing things. And there's a certain interpretation that goes in there, and that can be influenced and will be influenced by your, your understanding of the scriptures. Now, that lawless one, this is not the main message, by the way, but I just, and, and I, I, I'm not doing this to, to rattle people. The, the Bibles are accurate sufficiently accurate as far as uh, translations as far as conveying the basic messages but the translators can sometimes um, by their translation narrow the range of meaning in a way and point you in a certain direction that the scripture doesn't necessarily do and that is a danger with translations uh, or or, uh, see, every one of us understands things uh, based on our experiences and our knowledge, perceptions, and it, we, we don't see truth as objective reality. Uh, that there is interpretation in there by us, and it, it often can mislead us. And that's why we need the spirit of truth. Uh, have to be born again. And we have to refer to God's word. But here's here's a just a just I just want you to be aware of this. So when you hear people being dogmatic about some things, especially when it comes to prophecy, uh, just yeah, check things out for yourself a bit. So the uh, the expression the King James says that wicked be revealed. That is actually the best. Everybody else says lawless one. Uh, or uh, the NLT says the man of lawlessness, which is not a literal interpretation either. That's a, that's a paraphrase. The NLT is a paraphrase. Uh, even the Young's literal says lawless one. But I want to point out something here. And you find it, this is the green marks a, a variant. You don't have to worry about that. Uh, but right, let's see, where are we here? See, it says here, and then the... Uh, at that time, the time of the falling away, uh, will be revealed, over, over here, the lawless, the lawless. It's a singular, but as I pointed out previously, the man of sin or the man of lawlessness that expression uh is like is is in the greek can either mean a particular individual or it can mean a type of individual 
descriptive of a type, like the word generation works that way too. It can mean a period of time, but it generally refers to a type of people or a class of people or a race of a race of people that which springs forth. Like the generation of Adam would be all the descendants of Adam. It wouldn't be the 40 year period that, uh, well, Adam lived for like 800 some years. So, see, that's, uh, th those are the pitfalls of language. Even in English, we have ambiguity. And sometimes I believe the ambiguity is deliberate on God's part because it has a range of true applications. But here, when they translate it as the lawless one, the word one is not in the Greek. And the lawless, as in, you can say the, if we say in English, the lawless, that can, would generally be referring to all the lawless people, right? See, we have similar things in English, but we just don't think about it. So this is, uh, and if you it, the word, putting the word one in there restricts the meaning of the Greek to a particular individual, and the Greek does not say that. So the translators distorted the word of God by putting the word one there. It's not there. The word is singular, but the singular, the lawless, just like in English, the lawless can refer to a entire kind of people. It's like America. There is no one America. So the, uh, the lawless one is a bad translation, although it's almost universally done here. As you can see, the lawless one, uh, the New King James, the lawless one, the New American Standard, the lawless one, the ESV, the lawless one, the NIV, the lawless one. I'm sure if I looked at the, the RSV that some of these derive from and are influenced by, or the ASV, it would say the lawless one too. And so these people, uh, the, a lot of these translators were in, influenced by evangelicalism and Darbyism and Schofieldism and uh, dispensationalism. Um, and the prophetic movement, uh, not the, the, uh, per, uh, the per study of the prophetic scriptures that became really popular in the 19th century. There were prophetic conferences, not the kind of prophetic conferences they have today or people prophesy, but the study of the prophecy. People were looking for the coming of the Lord Jesus. A little ahead of time, but unless you're a, a Seventh-day Adventist or Jehovah's Witness, <laughs> the secret coming. Oh, he came, he just did it secretly. Nobody knows about it. Is that what Jesus said? When Jesus said, uh, if he comes, he'll come secretly. No, he denied that. He said, it'll be like the lightning that flashes from one end to the other. Every eye will see it. It won't be in secret. There is no secret coming. It's quite open in public. That's the purpose. The judge has arrived. He's about to take his seat. But I just wanted to point that out. That's not my main point. But when you're, don't build a doctrine or accept a doctrine that's not soundly grounded in the in a wide range of scriptures, without uh, good justification. Because and again, some of these things, when you're only dealing with a uh, thing that's mentioned once or twice in the Bible. Uh, you have to look carefully at the words in the original language and realize, see, they didn't even mark one. See, here, at least in the New King James, as it appears in here, it says the, the lawless one. That is uh, the coming of the lawless one. Right here it says uh, uh, that's even inserted. But the lawless one, the word one should be in italics because it's not even implied necessarily by the Greek. Just because they're singular. 
because it's a singular type of people. It can be that. It can be a single individual. But when you narrow, the, when you, this is the problem with translations. And translators have to do this. Otherwise, they'd end up spending having a, a whole page of footnotes on t for every verse at the bottom. But they have to choose. How are they going to translate it? They would have been well to choose the literal rendering of the Greek. And then the lawless will be revealed. They didn't want to do that. Even that's probably the proper way to translate it. Because the apocalypse is, this apocalypse here, the revealing of the lawless, literally the lawless, singular, but that's just like in English, the lawless is a singular, right? Because it refers to a kind of people. Will be revealed. Whom the Lord will consume with the breath of his mouth and the destroy with the brightness of his coming. Well, in the book of Revelation, that's the battle of, of Armageddon. It's not just a, a leader of the forces, but the forces that gather together against the Lord, all of them, the armies of the world, destroyed. Poof. Up in smoke and brimstone. He will wage war with the sword of his mouth. That's his word. Uh, he doesn't lift a hand. He speaks a word. The word, remember, the word, Christ created the heavens and the earth by speaking them into existence. Let there be. So apparently there he says, let them be no more. Uh, he upholds all things. He stops with upholding them. Shoot have gone. Uh, the coming of the lawless one let me look over here, uh, is according to the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. It sounds like the charismatic movement, power and signs and lying wonders. You know, the, the Pentecostal and charismatic movement, if you uh, look at the history of it, it's not about truth, it's not about the gospel, it's not about Jesus Christ. It's about promoting an experience and, from, and the seeking for power. It is so, in, uh, it, it, it is one of the essential elements of that is seeking for power. And I hear churches that aren't even Pentecostal all the time asking the Holy Spirit to come. He came on Pentecost. I was, uh, there was a little bit of the sermon on Sunday and I, I, I just wanted to, to say something but I didn't but um, of course I always having been being a preacher you tend to want to say you're yeah yeah don't skip this part don't skip that you know so but I, what I wanted to, to tell the congregation and I was really tempted to is to stand up at one point and say he's already come because so often the prayers are uh, come Holy Spirit, come, 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 you know. And now there is a difference between the coming of the Holy Spirit and being filled with the Holy Spirit. Being filled is not a uh, a continual reality. Uh, the but if you're born again, you have the Holy Spirit. To to ask the Holy Spirit to come is a denial of the fact that He dwells in you, isn't it? It, it's so often what we do in church is not biblical. It's We don't think about it. We just go with the flow because it's easier than going against the flow. It's a lot easier to drift downstream than it is to paddle upstream. But it can take you into bad places. If you just go with the flow, uh, it's it's Satan's playground. He can you just and verse ten, 
And this is the central, central point here. And with all unrighteousness of deception among those who perish because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. See, the love of the truth is something you receive. In other words, it's a gift from God. It's not something you create in yourself. It's not something you're born with. It's a gift. You receive it. That means you have to want it. Ask, and you shall receive. Seek, and you shall find. Knock, and it shall be open to you. And it's necessary for salvation. If you do not love the truth, you will not be saved because you're not interested in the truth. Jesus Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. If you have no love of truth, if you love the lie, well, you're a politician. Oh, wow. January 6th committee. And for this reason, God will send them strong delusion that they might believe the lie. Now, the lie. It doesn't say a lie. It says the lie. A particular lie. That they all may be condemned who did not believe the truth, but had a pleasure in unrighteousness, what is not right in the sight of God. Well, that sounds like American society in general. Just about everything that goes on in America is not right in the sight of God. Everything. The whole thing is corrupt through and through. You know, in a few weeks, it'll be the 4th of July. I will not celebrate that day. I think that day, the celebration of, of rebellion against God is not right. But I'm sure in many if, or most churches, there will be some celebration of the 4th of July. And I will perhaps ask the pastor at the church that I attend whether they're going to make special mention of that. Because if they do, if they plan on doing that, I want to be absent. I think it's better to absent yourself from church than go to church and get upset. Because uh, it, it's just better, just like Father's Day celebration this week. I'm, I'm going to absent myself because I don't think secular holidays, the celebration of cultural things like that, belong in the church, especially when it's just an excuse for businesses to make more money. Have you ever noticed that, uh, say, like stores like Walmart, they go from one holiday to the next, usually a month or two in advance? Everything they can to these holidays are just means of extracting money, means of, of trying to uh, uh, put cultural pressure on people to buy things they wouldn't necessarily do. Uh, uh, what, what's uh, the, the, the lover's holiday, for example, in, what is it, February, Valentine's Day? What nonsense. All these things are all about money. It's just like uh, the news, and this has been going on for who knows how long. Longer than I've been on Earth. But uh, you, you get in the holiday seasons, usually if there's not wars and other things going on, it's all the, the constant news barrage is how Christmas sales are doing, right? I don't know if they even bother with that stuff anymore. Well, there might not, you know, with COVID, they, unless there's something like COVID or that dominating the news. But they probably even mentioned it then. I just don't watch the news on television anymore. I want to be able to click somewhere else. Because it doesn't matter whether it's ABS, ABC, CBS, or NBC. It's all the same junk. Or Fox. It's all the same junk. And Fox is just as much a part of it as everybody else. They just cater to a slightly different audience. But the love of the truth. What's the truth about the 4th of July? Are we, are Americans even willing, are Christians in America even willing to look at the 4th of July, the uh, celebration of the American Revolution, and independence from 
England biblically. Now, England, for its faults, for all its faults, was a Christian nation, officially. Now, it was a civilly Christian nation. I mean, it was state church, but Christianity was part of the government and part of the legal system. And uh, the king was a practicing, a devout practicing Christian, devoutly religious, put it that way. Uh, king George was not a tyrant. That is, uh, uh, but there were, there were godless forces in America, and the revolutionaries were godless. They were godless men. They were radicals. They were the Antifa of the day. And they drummed up this whole thing in their own personal interests. And, but they justified their interests with high-sounding language. Now, th these, these were not uh, ordinary working individuals. <laughs> they were certainly not Christians. Not a single one of them was a born-again Bible-believing Christians because a Christian could not engage in what they engaged in, revolution. It's absolutely forbidden by the Bible. Romans chapter 12. I mean, we're, we're told, we're taught throughout the Bible that we don't rise up, take up the sword against the government. Now, there are times for disobedience, but di passive disobedience is not the same as active rebellion. Uh, when Peter and John refuse, we have, we have good or repeated examples in the New Testament how to respond to uh, evil government. You know, it's like when Peter and John were ordered not to preach the gospel, not to preach the resurrection of Christ. Uh, they submitted to the punishment, but they refused to obey. They continued on with obedience to God. Now, the revolution was in no way conducted in obedience to God was in disobedience to God. The American Revolution was not only a revolution against the legitimate government of England, but it was also a revolution against God Almighty and uh, the uh, Christian um, society because uh, the, uh, the, the, uh, the nations of what was called Christendom, uh, Christian, the Christian religion was part of the government and the identity of that country, even if it was a superficial Christianity, as opposed to a deep godlessness like we have in America. Oh, the founding fathers expressed certain religious ideas, but they were Masons. That they believed in a. Uh, uh, there were deists. They believe in a generic God that doesn't interfere. The God of the Bible interferes a lot. If you've read the Bible, you know that. And if you if you've known anything about it's like people like Jefferson, Jefferson despised the Bible. He just cut it up. He liked the ethical teachings of Jesus, but he didn't like the miracles because he didn't believe that Jesus was divine. He was that atheist. He was without God. He did not believe God. Atheist is A without or not God. Yeah, Jefferson was without God. Just like Lincoln was. See, the, the, these all these people believe in a God, but it's a God of their own imagination. It's not the God who has revealed himself. You could have a God, that, but it's not the, if it's not the real God, you are an atheist because you're not with God. So God, uh, as you sow, so you reap. Because they don't love the truth, what does God do? He gives them a lie. Okay, go believe this, this then. See, it's, it's as you sow, so shall ye reap. And um, Amer it's, it's the, 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 the nuttiness right now. We've got, okay, we've got, America's become so wicked, we've got, Young people out there just, just butcher others for sport. Uh, my wife happened to turn on a movie the other day 
because she realized that we have things on the TV that she wasn't aware of or forgotten. Um, I don't know, was it HBO Max? It's something that came free with the, uh, the, the Internet service. And it was a Tom Cruise movie. And I, was, I, I saw the intro. It was about a, a detective and a sniper. And the opening scenes about, was about this guy that gratuitously shoots five people. Men, women, and, uh, and just, just, well, they were there, so he just shot them. The sniper. Hollywood, who is composed of all these leftless, leftist, anti-God people, is the most, the greatest promoter of gun violence in the United States and the world. They glorify it. They promote it. And they've been doing this for years. You know, the, the gangster movies and all that stuff. They always, But back then, they at least had a Hollywood code that, that says you have to, uh, you can't glorify violence. You have to show the, the just deserts of justice bringing these people down in the end. But that's all been rejected. That part of it's been rejected. Now they just glorify the violence. They, they don't have any moral content, just amoral content. If you haven't noticed, the, uh, the police and everything else are presented, uh, the heroes, of, of, like in the police, are presented as being just as, as wicked often as the people they're after. They, they engage in lying and deception and everything else. And this is a corrosive effect not only on uh, society in general, but on police. Because it gets into them, too, and they say, well, it's right. They're, see, police officer, you have to, if you are a Christian and you're a police officer, and I can understand why a, a Christian might want to be a police officer, because you want to do good. But you, you can't be willing to lie and deceive in order to achieve results to try to trick people into confessing and do that kind of stuff. That's immoral. It's immoral. It's like waterboarding. It's, it's wickedness. The idea is not simply to, to, uh, to arrest people, too, and get them convicted, the, or, or just arrest them so that you get, they get out of your hair for a minute, like they did with those, the van full of guys. The, the counter, so you arrest the counter protesters because you, you, you want to avoid the possibility of a confrontation. Yeah. Those 31 guys, they arrested for conspiracy to, to commit riot, which apparently is a fel which is apparently a misdemeanor. I know what happened. The sheriff wanted to avoid the, the possibility, so he just just. You know, it's, it won't hold up in court. You're going to prove a conspiracy? That's hard to prove. Conspiracy, you have to actually prove they conspired to riot. Well, what about the demonstration that was going on there? Why weren't they all arrested? Two. Well, they just wanted to, the, 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 the sheriff or whatever it was, just wanted to avoid a confrontation. So that, well, I'll just detain these people on a pretty much a bogus charge and then they won't just let them go I know the courts aren't going to and that's the kind of stuff that goes on and that's uh, Hollywood promotes those kind of things all the time uh, do what what is uh, expedient at the expense of justice and truth and Hollywood just promotes that kind of garbage because that's what they are they are godless wicked people and if it makes a buck, they're all in favor of it. They belong to the devil. If, you're, if you are not born again, as Jesus said, you're under the domain of the devil. You're of the father, of your father, the devil. Everyone comes into this world in, born into that domain. You have to be born again to enter the kingdom of God, to get out from under that domain. And you have to receive the love of the truth to be saved. Do you have enough love of the truth to be uncomfortable? Or are you all concerned about your own comfort? It's like celebrating the 4th of July. 
are you willing to look at the truth about what America is and what the revolution was? You didn't hear the truth in school. You know, receiving the love of the truth will make you uncomfortable. And as you learn more and more, you'll become more and more uncomfortable with this world. The more you see things as they really are, the more you want to go to heaven. Get out of this place. It's like this January 6th hearing. It is worse than the communist show trials under Stalin. Those show trials were done for the benefit of the state. You know, yeah, we know you're not guilty, but we want a public example and you're going to be it, you know. Uh, but January 6th is done for raw political reasons. Those hearings. It's, it's just these people, every one of them utterly hates Donald Trump and wants to make sure that he cannot run in 2024. That's what it's all about. The whole effort to try to impeach the president after he was already out of office. That's what it was all about. These Democrats are willing to use anything they can get away with to accomplish their purpose. And their purpose is wicked because they're wicked, utterly wicked. And most of the Republicans along with them. So you got, that's why you got Cheney, and it's not, not even a Democrat thing. You got Cheney and the other, whatever you want to call those creatures. Just consumed with hatred. Now, personally, I would rather see somebody other than Donald Trump nominated. DeSantis might be interesting. I don't think the Texas governor is so hot. Uh, but uh, there, there, are, there are some people in... Governors tend to be... Senators are awful. Never elect a senator for president. They've, they've spent too many years talking and not doing. Uh... No, but yet you, you, the idea of uh, so not everybody is equally wicked, but I don't know if a real Christian could even survive in politics. A real Christian could you even be elected anywhere in this country, at least to a, a significant enough. I'm, I'm afraid there are some people that I think are actually Christians that have been elected to Congress, and I fear for their soul. Because the thing is, it corrupts everybody that gets in there. The, the pressure to go along with the corruptions, the pressure to remain silent about what's done. How things are done there. Just like the, the congressman that was uh, uh, talking to an audience and talking about how committee seats were bought and sold. That stuff should all be exposed. We should have hearings but on Congress and the corruption in Congress. But who is going to conduct those hearings? It's going to have to be Jesus Christ. <laughs> because Congress is not going to investigate themselves. Congress is not. See, this is one of the problems with, with Congress, even if they, they don't want to uh, really investigate uh, Biden, I don't think, because Biden was part of the Senate for decades and decades. He's one of them. And to expose his corruption is to expose the corruption of them all because it's endemic there. The need for money, money is the lifeblood of American politics, and what you do to get that money is corrupt. You, you Corporations in the Supreme Court demonstrated their utter ignorance and uh, uh, foolishness in permitting corporations to make uh, campaign contributions because uh, th th these justices, even the conservative justices, are foolish. See, there isn't one Christian on the court. Roman Catholics 
to be a Roman Catholic doesn't mean you're a Christian. But the idea that cor corporate didn't they see the corruption that that would bring? Apparently, they're so isolated. They're li they live in their own little bubble. But the, the whole system is is corrupt. Democracy is, I think, a, a inherently corrupt system because it requires the... In order to have a, a godly democracy, you have to have a godly population. And if you've got a godly population, you really don't need a government. See, then you could have a very small government. But that's not what we got. The bigger the government, the more corrupt it's going to be. Power always attracts corruption. It attracts corrupt individuals. Just like uh, rotting carcasses attract flies. That's the way it is. Big churches become corrupt. Don denominations become corrupt. The leadership always attracts those who want power. And that's not a godly virtue. The desire for power is not a godly thing. The desire to control others is not a godly thing. The, the very idea that you think you're worthy of running other people's lives is not a godly thing. And the idea for money and you know salary, all that stuff is corrupting. And as time goes on, things go from bad to worse. So the 4th of July, if, I mean, if you examine it biblically, it was utterly in violation of the Scripture. And to celebrate a sinful event like that, a sinful revolution, will Christians in America even confess a revolution was sinful, a violation of the Word of God? I think MacArthur, John MacArthur at one point said he didn't think it was justified. And he got a lot of blowback for such a mild statement as that. No, it was wicked. It was sinful. Any a Christian participated in that was participating in sin. Obvious, manifest sin. It wasn't following Christ. And I, I, you know, we people tend to be moved by emotions rather than by truth. Truth is not emotion. Truth has to do with reason, thought, facts, God. Emotions are to be controlled. You're not to be driven by them. You're not to follow emotions. That's not to be American, isn't it? But everything's nuts. So here, it's like we just had this school shooting. Or how many have we had? I mean, it's, everything's going nuts because the country is in free fall. Free fall into hell. But as you sow, so shall ye reap. That's what the scripture says. So what you do to others will come back to you. So right now, the, the, the Congress has passed a gun control measure because they have to do something. N not that it will do anything uh, or would have prevented what happened anyway. See, the problem was the wicked individual that used a gun to kill those kids. But they don't want to, you know, have you ever noticed that they never really look at why these people do these things? Because to expose that would to be exposed society itself.
it would expose the corruption that's a pandemic in America, the wickedness of America. But here you have Congress and the president pushing for this gun control because of the violence in America. At the very time, they are shipping hundreds of tons of weapons into Ukraine and other countries around this world. Shiploads and shiploads and shiploads of, of weapons, of firearms, and bigger, th big firearms. What about gun control there? What about banning the export of firearms to other countries? What about disarming NATO? What about stopping arms shipments to Israel and to the Saudis? And to the Pakistanis and to all these other countries. Why not? Because there's money to be made. And Congress gets a lot of donations from these arms manufacturers. See, Congress is bought and sold, especially now. And what, are American Christians willing to look at Israel biblically? So many fundamentalists and evangelicals are so influenced by dispensationalism, they believe that Israel is God's chosen people. No, they're cut off. Does God have a plan to save a, a group of people out of Israel? Yes, just like he has a plan to save people from every nation, tribe, and tongue. Most of Israel, the vast majority, are enemies of Christ. They're cut off. They're hostile to all men, literally. I remember, I think it was back in the 80s, the Israel's launched so many wars against Gaza. I can remember before, now, now Israel no longer allows news cameras to cover their, their, their wars. Uh, because they commit war crimes, and it's best not to have that on camera. But they do. I Israel is not the victim. They just play the victim, but they are not. They are, they are a protectorate of the United States, and part of the American empire, and uh, basically a rogue state. They routinely bomb Syria. They just took out the airport again apparently bombed the run runway, so it's not functional. The civilian airport in Damascus. It's probably used for receiving armed shipments from Iran, but... You know, if Israel, as you sow, so shall ye reap. Israel reaps what it sows. I can remember uh, uh, one particular Gaza event where they, did, they uh, uh, you know, the Gaza would shoot some homemade rockets... Uh, that can't hit the broadside of a barn. Most of them land out in the agricultural fields. Uh, but Israel, you know, you, you, you scratch us and we're going to smash you. That's their national philosophy, apparently. Uh, it actually goes back to the Talmud and to Israeli religious or Jewish religious uh, beliefs unfortunately and you can see it among the pharisees in the in the bible too the the uh, the there's an an air of superiority and that breeds trouble it's uh it's sort of ironic that those that were so uh persecuted and uh, murdered by the nazis practice some of the same ideas It's hypocrisy. 
that I can remember in that particularly well televised uh, Gaza war. That Israel, see, first of all, uh, Gaza and the Palestinian territories are now essentially the same as American Indian reservations. Penal colonies, or Australia, penal colony for the British. You will either you can either go to Australia or it will hang you. <laughs> so Australia was was populated by rogues and thieves and murderers. But uh, the Brits did that. Of course, they would hang people for theft. Victorian England, not good, not very Christian. Uh, their, their, their Christianity was uh, as often uh, s political Christianity is, or state Christianity, a very thin, a veneer. You know how and you know how veneer tends to to peel off and it gets wet. It looks good, but it's only skin deep, a thirty second of an inch or so, and that's it. Of nice wood, and underneath is cheap stuff. The flesh. It's just a covering for the flesh. It's fig leaves for the flesh. That's he's a biblical analogy. But I remember they were uh the the military, the Israeli military, using all American supplied weapons, uh, their F sixteens and their hundred and fifty five millimeter self propelled uh, howitzers. They were I was watching this and they were striking back at Hamas and Hamas installations in Gaza. In Gaza, it was in Gaza City. This is an extremely densely populated area. And as I watched, they were using phosphorus weapons, white phosphorus weapons, in civilian areas, bursting shells. Now, phosphorus is sometimes used as a to produce a smoke screen. But that's not what it was being used for there. It, white phosphorus, uh, when it's exposed to air, it ignites and continues to burn. Even if you throw water on it, you cannot put it out. And it will land in your flesh and just burn into your flesh. It's, it's been banned from use in war. It's that terrible. But that doesn't stop the United States from supplying it to Israel, apparently, or supplying the, the means to use it. And so Israel was using white phosphorus, otherwise commonly called WP, on Gaza. And I could see these airburst shells, and I could see the, the, the coming down like firework stars, the, the burning chunks of phosphorus just depend, uh, descending into the city. They were, they were bursting it you know, like 100 feet above the area, so it's spread over a wide area. That is a criminal act, legally. It's a war crime to use white phosphorus, especially on civilian populations. It's a war crime to conduct those kind of strikes on civilian populations. And it was totally out of, uh, not commensurate with the acts that were being carried out against Israel with by Hamas with their homemade rockets. You know, take a piece of pipe and some powder and because most of them were almost all of them just land harmlessly out in the fields. Israel does not care. I'm going to testify of this about Palestinians. They don't care about non-Jews. When I was over there in the mid-80s, I saw that too. Israel was engaging in collective punishment. Uh, I saw they closed down one of the cities in what was part of the West Bank at that time. Uh, because there had been a knife attack on a uh, Jewish soldier, occupying soldier. And so they closed the entire town, shuttered the businesses, put 
razor wire out in the street, shut it all down to punish the community. That is a war crime under international law. Collective punishment is a war crime. Unfortunately, it's part of Judaism. The, the idea that we are the superior people and everybody else is dogs, the goyim. There, there's this attitude, and I've experienced it at a time, and I'm not anti-Jewish. This is simply sinfulness, and sinfulness is throughout the human race. But it can... can uh, the scriptures, including the Old Testament, you know, you, you get back what you sow if you treat others with wickedness, but you'll get wickedness back. If you promote violence around the world, you will get violence at home. God will see to it. As you sow, so shall ye reap. Uh, some, as you get to know see p people that are overtly sin sinful, prostitutes and drug addicts and some of these others, you begin to see that they suffer the consequences of their own decisions, of their own actions. They get payback all the time. They live miserable lives as a result of their own sinfulness. But there, there's a, a, there's a particular attitude, and Americans have some of this attitude, too, that when you believe that you're good and you're better than others, and you, you have the idea that, that you're doing what is right and you know best, and, you, and the others are others, it's just like how the Nazis treated the Jews. They dehumanize them. Well, Israel dehumanizes the Palestinians as into lesser human beings. And that is rooted in the Talmud. And it's actually enjoyed as in a, a commanded, enjoined as a commandment in the Talmud. For example, I can remember reading one area where it talked about if you find a Gentile in a pet, you know, they can't get out. You are not to help him out because he's not a Jew. He's not one of God's chosen people. He's a dog. He's one of them. He's an orc, to use the, uh, the uh, language that some of the Ukrainians are using about the Russians. A less, lesser than truly human, not the chosen ones. It's, it was, it's actually taught that you are not to help him get out of that situation. You're to leave him to die. Unless, by not helping him out, you bring reproach onto the Jewish community. So it's all about the Jewish community. What benefits the Jewish community? That's, that's in the Talmud. Otherwise, you're to do nothing to help the Gentiles. You're to let them perish. You know, it's a judgment of God on them. And Christians can get that attitude, too. It's ungodly. God who sent his son into the world to save sinners. Well, see, Judaism doesn't believe that. Judaism is anti-Christian, anti-Christ. Denies the Father and the Son denies the Son of God. They need to be saved, just like everybody else, including most Christians. They need to be saved. But the point is that you can deceive yourself about yourself. Most Israelis cannot see the crimes they commit, the war crimes they commit. They just dismiss it. Uh, the, and, and they regard the Palestinians, as I said, as a, as a lesser. I'm generalizing, of course, but this is, and this is rooted in the Talmud, in Jewish tradition. 
as lesser creatures, not God's people. They do not treat them, just like the Americans and the natives in this country. The settlers, the invaders treated the Native Americans, ex with some exceptions. William Penn, uh, Roger Williams, I believe, but few exceptions. And those in power, uh, they didn't treat the natives as equals, as equally human. They regarded themselves as superior and then ended up pushing them onto reservations, which is what Israel has done. Gaza is a prison camp surrounded by wire. Nothing gets in or out without Israel's permission. It's a prison camp. That's what they did to it. Rather than occupy it, they simply eventually just put a fence around the whole thing and cut off access, controlled everything going in and out. It's a prison camp. It's a ghetto. It, isn't it ironic that, that Israel has done the same thing to the Palestinians as the Nazis did to the Jews, like in the Warsaw Ghetto? Concentration camp. And like in America, you know, the Indian reservations kept getting smaller and smaller and smaller. It used to be everything west of, you know, we'll, we'll move the Indians west of the Mississippi. Yeah, they got to they gotta move west of the Mississippi. We got, you know, they can have Oklahoma and all those things. Well, until we decide we want that land and then we'll take it again. And then we'll get the, the reservations keep shrinking down and down and down. And you end up with, you know, the, the big reservations, I think, are places like South Dakota. Uh, the, the Sioux reservations there, and those places are just places of squalor. Drunkenness, alcoholism, just all over, because there's, they have stripped everything from the Native Americans, and uh, they don't have stripped their all dignity from them. They did not the Native Americans were sinful people, just like everybody else, but they needed Christ. But Americans are sinful people. That's what I'm pointing out. And the more power sinful people are, the worse they are. They have more power to do evil. They're more unrestrained. The United States is using its power for evil. And that very power corrupts more and more. The, like I pointed out, the, uh, the hypocrisy of the uh, Congress pushing for gun control while the Congress and the president have been shipping as much weapons as they can into every festering wound in this world. Does that solve the problem? No. The United States promotes revolutions and violence all over the place, including people like Reagan, Nicaragua and uh, you know Venezuela all these places the United States is part of the problem a Christian nation a wealthy Christian nation should be seeking what is good for others not only in our own interests but the interests of others if we want peace we should be wishing that for others too not trying to impose forms of government which are inherently flawed democracy is simply a form of government it is not a moral virtue Americans need to repent of their rights repent of their libertarian or uh, uh, liberal values and adopt the values of God.
This country needs to repent of its global wickedness and its national wickedness and its promotion of evil here and around the world. Rights like LGBT rights, the right to perversion, that's wicked. But we try to punish countries that, that seek to suppress the spread of that. It's like Russia just passed another law. Uh, again, outlawing gay propaganda. Because you have to recruit people into that. So they, they didn't pass a law outlawing gays. They just said, no, you're not allowed to try to recruit children. You know, none of this Western uh, uh, drag queen story time at the public library. Your tax dollars at work. See, these sinful people use power and the opportunities of government to spread sin. It's evil. It's evil. To try to, to, to recruit people and children into what is manifestly a dead end. These, these forms of sexuality do not produce life. That is the least I can say against it. God condemns it. It's contrary to the purposes of God. God created sex. But it needs to be expressed according to God's will. That's not the Roman Catholic ideas of it either, by the way. There's, there's been so much through the centuries, there's been so much corruption in institutions like Romanism, the, the monastic ideals and all this. You know, Augustine was a very twisted individual. Twisted ideas, especially about, about sexuality. Because he had desires he couldn't control. But that when you try to impose your own problems on everybody else, no. no. Uh, so th those things are too, but Christians, you know, we're, we're not very good at being Christians, I'm afraid. But we have to love the truth. We have to be able to look at ourselves, judge ourselves, look, look at, see ourselves as we really are, not try to deceive ourselves, but also see everything else as it really is, as God sees it, as he reveals to us in the scripture, not to delude ourselves, not to live in two separate lives a Sunday morning Christianity and then live the rest of the week like the world. That's not acceptable to God. God will not have a Sunday morning people. You either belong to him or you don't. If he's not your Lord, he's not your Savior. If you do not bow the knee to Jesus Christ, you're not bowing the knee to the crucified and risen Christ either. Christianity is not a, well, I'll take this and I'll take that, but I'm not going to do that, take that other stuff. No. You have to receive Christ as he is, not as you want him to be. Not as a, a genie to do your will, but as a Lord you submit to and trust in, a God whom you love. We have to stop wallowing in the world. God com commands us to come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord. Then I will receive you as sons and daughters. We have no fellowship with the world. 
They are under the dominion of Satan. We are under Christ. But yet we were there too. So we should see them both recognizing their sinfulness, realizing that we were saved from that, and that God desires to save them from that too. not to exalt ourselves over others, but to realize the power of God's salvation and desire that others experience that also through faith in Jesus Christ. Not just be angry at the world, but realize that until Christ comes again, God's purpose in Christ is to call people out of the world onto himself, onto reconciliation with him, onto salvation.